then welcome back to Adobe Live with the interestingly the German intro. Why not? Okay. <laughs> it's really Madness Monday today. Good morning. Welcome everybody who's joining us today. Today I am joined by my new best friend Emrit. Hi there, how are you? Hi there, great to join you. Fantastic. And together we will have hopefully a stress-free hour with no technical difficulties at all. <laughs> and sorry for being late by a few minutes because we also had some technical difficulties before the stream right all sorts of fun and um, yes let's take a look at who's joining us in the chat today because as always we are reading the behance chat so if you're watching this on youtube come on over to behance.net slash Adobe Live. That's behance.net slash Adobe Live. And that's where all the cool kids are hanging out. For example, Sandrine is there and Gareth and Kirsty and Jackie and Andreas and Richard and Sean and uh, oh, oh, apparently all of them and Steve from New Zealand. Good, m no, good evening. Good evening, Steve. Uh, yes, so thank you so much. Keith, hi there. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Today is all about the Keith Herring Foundation X Adobe Contest. It's a mouthful. And we just want to talk a bit about the contest today. And of course, Amrit, I think you will draw in fresco for a bit uh, for us today. Is that right? A bit of live drawing. That is right. Yeah, I have a few, <laughs> a few surprises planned. Surpri uh, surprising, no, <laughs> exciting, uh, that's what I wanted to say. So, yes. I think for those who have no idea about that contest, I think we can just um, watch a brief video and hopefully that will explain a couple of things about Keith Herring himself and of course um, the contest. So, let's take a watch. Keith Herring believed that art can change the world and that it should reach people from all walks of life. While art is often hidden inside museums, he used subways and buildings. <laughs> Sneakers and bodies, and even the Berlin Wall as a canvas. He spread his message of love, hope, and equality. All with a deceptively simple line. A bold line. A white line. A bright line. A black line. With chalk, marker, or brush. Keith Haring died in 1990, but his message is more relevant than ever. Like Keith, Adobe believes that creativity is for everyone. That's why we've made his tools freely available through Creative Cloud. So pick up his brush and start drawing a line. Right, I think that was a fantastic intro. So, hopefully you now have a general idea who we are talking about today. And I think, what should we do? Should we start with the contest or should we first take a look at your portfolio? Amrit, what do you think? Um, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, the contest. Okay, the contest, whatever you say. <laughs> yeah, right. let's talk about well, the contest. <laughs> let's, let's talk about the contest first. So let's go to my screen. And I have opened the um, contest page, and I'm sure I can find some way to post it to you in a moment. But for now, this is the way for you to engage with a contest, because we do have a contest where you can enter and win some pretty cool prizes, to be honest, right? And um, let's, the way it works is basically you will download brushes, the Keith Herring brushes, and you have to use them in your work and submit. Hang on, there we go. Draw, share, win. You have to submit your work. Uh, and I will talk about how to do that in a moment. Um, and then Adobe will draw eight winners who will receive $5,000 and one, yes, Creative Cloud subscription and one, um, oh no, all, all of them apparently who <laughs> will be shown on Adobe Max which is uh, in a couple of weeks. Oh my God, it's really soon, October 20 to um, 22. So yeah, you'll be shown at max, you will receive 
$5,000 and a one-year Creative Cloud subscription. And all you have to do really is to draw anything related to positivity, for example, like the environment, education, equality, and of course, other causes, promoting positive change. And you have to post your work on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or, or Facebook, not all of them. And you have to use the hashtags Adobe X Key Thering and hashtag contest. And you have to share that by September 29, 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time, 2020. Right. Those are the guidelines. Of course, there are more rules if you want to um, know if you can participate. And yes, here are some examples of other works that have been submitted. And yeah, check them out. I will post the link in the chat in a moment. But now I think it's time to go over to your screen, Ambert, and just to take a look at who you are. And perhaps just you can open your portfolio, I think. Yeah, sure thing. Right. Can you uh, see that okay? I don't think you have that shared. Just share that again. In the meantime, I would say to the friends in the chat, oh yes, by the way, um, there is no need to buy any Adobe software for this contest to enter. You can use the free trial of Photoshop or the free version of Fresco. Both will absolutely work. And yeah, Fresco, by the way, is free, right? There are some premium features in there, but to enter the contest, none of them are necessary. So download Fresco for free on the iPad and, more recently, on Windows 10 devices. Because we have expanded the selection of Windows 10 devices we support. And so, hopefully, everyone can join this contest. Even if you just have an iPhone, or uh, not an iPhone, an iPad, I mean, or a Windows 10 device. And of course, if you're on a Mac, on a Mac you will have to um, use Photoshop. Yeah. So I think you can just, I think you're having some trouble there. I can't see your no, screen I, I, quite I yet. Think you, I think you may have my video disabled. I don't, is, is that on your side? No, I don't think so. So make sure green button, share content or share screen, and then tap on the zoom. Mm, yeah, it's all done. Let me just unshare it and I will reshare it in a second. All right, okay. In the meantime, I can take a look at the chat, of course, who's joining us today. Raseem, hi. <laughs> They're talking about jokes for some reason. I don't know why. And... Okay, you could... <laughs> we're getting there, everybody. <laughs> now we're really, really big. Well, that's great. Oh, no. It's all falling apart like my hopes and dreams. Oh, no, no. what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just logging is... back in. Sorry, guys. Oh, no, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Honestly, I, I think I can talk to you for a second, dear chat. This is Madness Monday. Technical difficulties all over. And some other things I can't talk about. But it's all. <laughs> it's great. Okay, there we are. And now we just have to see your screen. Because if we can't, that would be... That would be a rather short stream, I suppose. <laughs> it's like, no, okay, right. right. Oh. Okay, we'll give you a second. In the meantime, I will just have a look. How is that? Do, do you have that? Mm, no. Perhaps you just have to um, rejoin with the app. Okay, while you do that, let's take a look at how you can... <laughs> no, we Let's take a look at how you can participate and how you can download the brushes because let's go over to here and it's really, really easy. Yes, now we have it. But now I want to continue my... Okay, I'll briefly say how you can download them. You can already open your portfolio and then we will go over to your screen. That sounds good. Yes. <laughs> so it's <laughs> really, really easy. You have to log in with your Adobe ID and then you can click on this button here and it will automatically add them to your library. And then you can just um, go to your Photoshop or Fresco and they will appear in the libraries and you can just use them from there. All wirelessly, effortlessly, and you can use those silky, smooth, creamy, rich, deep, gritty brushes. All right, okay, enough of that. Let's take a look at your screen. Ta-da! Okay. Right, it so works. this Wonderful. is, yes, we got it. 
fantastic. <laughs> so we're taking a look at your portfolio before we go into Fresco. And I, th I suppose you can just perhaps briefly introduce yourself 13 minutes into the stream. And I, I think we could just have a look at one or two projects, perhaps. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so my name is uh, Amrit Birdie, as you may have guessed. Um, I'm a London-based illustrator. Um, I work predominantly digitally, mostly on an iPad or a Wacom tablet and using a combination of the kind of Photoshop, Fresco and Illustrator. Um, so it's a nice broad range of things that I use there. I mean, if you can just see my screen, mm -hmm. uh, this is the kind of work that I do. Um, I like to combine kind of saturated color work, line work, and then also texture work. And, and that texture work is really kind of what I want to talk about and how the, uh, the Keith Haring brushes can, can be really, really useful. Um, so this was done without the Keith Haring brushes. Um, and, and I like to add a grain of texture to the work just to give it uh, more of a, an organic, authentic feel. Um, the thing that I find about the brushes actually that are of real utility to my work is I can add the texture through the brushes really, really easily. And mm. I, I'm going to show you how I do that in Fresco yes. in a second, which is nice and exciting. I'll <laughs> show you a couple more pieces. <laughs> so those are done in, um, in Photoshop? In Photoshop, yeah. So I do um, all of my line work um, mm. and then I will use Photoshop to the combination of um, Right. color overlays, you know, overlay layers, uh, color dodge layers and things like that to kind of create the contrast. Um, so the, uh, yeah, the line works quite rigid and detailed. So to kind of offset, and that's just, you know, my natural kind of yeah. how I work and that's how it evolved. So adding kind of the textures and some of the effects um, really, really kind of balances that out. So it's not so rigid and not so structured. Um, and, and then these key hand brushes obviously help enormously mm -hmm. in uh, in kind of achieving different styles and kind of depths and things like that. Um, yeah, so that's a, a little bit about me. And the chat is saying wonderful work. And yes, I oh. agree. This is oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I feel mystified. Yes, and there are some things I can't talk about. Sorry. <laughs> right. I'm taking a second. Okay. Yeah, oh, so I was like, why is that screen so white? I'm like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so this, um, now this is the background actually using the Keith Haring brushes and a couple oh. of kind of overlay layers. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the contrast between the two kind of styles is quite, quite stark. But mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying being able to use, you know, my hand and the pressure to kind of add the texture as I see best as opposed to an overlay as opposed to using a kind of a predefined texture or, or even creating my own texture overlays, the brushes, I'm just able to do it directly onto the piece, which is liberating, really liberating. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's enough to struggle with your own creativity. The tools shouldn't limit you in that way. So the tools should enable you to work, not limit you. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and I totally, totally agree. And, uh, and this is, you know, one of my first forays into uh, into kind of using Fresco on a more uh, in-depth basis. And I'm slowly but steadily falling in love with it, actually. Um, <laughs> I'm opening up Fresco more than Photoshop these days, which is quite cool. Wow. I mean, come on. <laughs> I know. Um, yes, yeah, so this is another one, again, using the kind of like the, the textured overlay. Um, no Keith Haring brushes used on this one just yet. But I, again, I'm going to show you how I like to kind of apply uh, textures using the brushes in, in Fresco. So if we... Um, and just in case it isn't obvious, you are on an iPad right now and you're using the Apple Pencil to draw on the iPad directly. Mm. And that is correct, does, yes. Do you also work, like, uh, when you're working on your um, computer, of course you do have a graphics tablet, I suppose. Probably a Wacom? A Wacom? I have a Wacom, yes. I have a, um, a, a Wacom and a... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a Wacom, which is which is great. I mean, they're really, really very good. I, I think um, I think the iPad just offers the uh, the mobility. So if I'm traveling or if I'm not at you know a workstation, I'm still able to produce the work. And you know, it's become it's kind of become habitual for me to use the iPad. To, it's <laughs> kind of my go-to device now. And you know, with all of the kind of the Adobe Suite kind of on there now, it's it's, it's definitely um, yeah, it's a good it's a good workflow. And I mean, of course, since Fresco will sync wirelessly over the cloud, you can start on fre in Fresco and finish your work in Photoshop. 
if you like, or, or go back. Totally, yes. And the best thing about that is actually I can, if I do need to do、uh, more detailed work or something, you know, much more、um, or intense,、uh, I'll switch over to desktop.、Mm. I'll download it on the cloud. It will swap through、uh, over to the devices really, really easily, which is、uh, nice and handy instead of all the、uh, no more we transfers. <laughs> <laughs> right, sending Dropbox <laughs> links. Okay. Yeah. Well, then I suppose we can just dive right into it and take a look at Fresco.、Mm. So you already have、um, installed or downloaded all the key tearing brushes, I suppose. I do indeed, and、mm. you can probably see some of the、uh, kind of the experiments I've been doing with the the kind of brushes. Seeing as you've seen them, I'll just open them up quickly.、Um, so that was the kind of the background texture for the、uh, the piece I showed you earlier, which is a, a combination of two or three of the brushes.、Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think with all brush sets, you have your favourites and your go tos, and I've definitely definitely got mine. So、um, I'll show you those.、Um, and again. Just a really natural kind of organic quality to you know effectively digital art on an iPad, and I, I think that's why I love them so much.、Um, I mean, of course, all of those brushes are created by the one and only Carl T. Webster, right?、Absolutely. And also, Carl is an illustrator, so he knows how、yeah. those brushes should be used and create not not be used how they should be created to be used in a very natural、mm -hmm. way. Yeah, I mean, I think he's done a, a fantastic job of the the pressure sensitivity and the very subtle textures to the brushes and the slight jitters on a lot of them, and it just really adds again the organic quality to the digital brush, which is just awesome.、Um, so let me open. Which one do you think? Should we go the tiger or the or the human? The tiger human. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we could ask Chat. Like chat, yeah, let's do tiger, it. Yeah, tiger or human? Let us know. And of course,、um, I just read through the、um, brush description、um, on the contest page, and it says like,、mm. mm, for the Keith Herring project, he crafted twenty-eight brushes that naturally mimic the behavior of tools that Herring used, from pens that run out of ink to paint that drips.、Mm. Keith Herring used ordinary tools, ordinary everyday tools, he says, but the way he used them made his style unique. And we are having some votes. Votes in the chat. They're saying tiger, 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 tiger,、oh, tiger, tiger, human. <laughs> Go with head、oh. on fire and、uh, tiger, of course. I think we have a. Yeah, the tiger、um, wins. <laughs> okay, just barely. <laughs> barely. Right. Okay. So um, the tiger is. No, that's a pixel layer, right? That's not like vector. That's also using the key pairing、yeah. brushes. It's a pixel layer. So this was using Photoshop. So、mm -hmm. I did the、uh, the line art in Photoshop,、um, and like I say, the, the real utility、um, of the key pen brushes for me are the textures, are the backgrounds, are the rich kind of details you can add in that respect. So I'm just going to kind of, I guess, show show you what I mean.、Um, first of all, here are all of the brushes, and there's is it 28. Did you say? Yes. Twenty-eight brushes, and they all have their own unique texture. So we've got the kind of the chalk brush, and I'm just going to use black and white for now. I mean, one one of the real great things about the brushes is, is opacity is key for them. So I mean, you can use them in all their glory, and that looks pretty cool.、Um, but you know, what I really like to do is、uh, pick my brush and kind of knock the opacity right down. And use it in a much more kind of delicate way, and then and then layer that over. So if I do my first layer, and something like this really does mimic kind of、um, a, a more traditional approach,、um, again to digital art. So if you look at that texture, look how amazing that is! So this is what I really love about the brushes. Yeah, you can really、yeah. just get in there and really dig in the pencil,、really? deep in the screen.、Uh, Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Without scratching the screen, but yeah, <laughs> just poking right through it. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'm really surprised how much you have, how much you can really press on the screen bef before you really see anything. Like some of the、um, some of the old、um, brushes in the old Photoshop sketch for the iPad, there was a pencil brush, and at first, like, 
this isn't drawing anything. Is the battery running out of my pencil? Like, no, you just really have to press on it. It's a pencil. You yeah. really have to dig in there. It's probably oh, two-edged sure. pencil. And, but, you know, I mean, it really helps on the, uh, the, the, the iPad. And, you know, all yeah. devices obviously do this, but, the, you know, the pressure sensitivity particularly can be... Well, know, they didn't somewhat. have that before. <laughs> no, they really didn't. <laughs> So it can be really liberating to just loosen up that pressure. That's just, oh, that looks lovely. And yeah, so this is one of my favorite brushes. It's the uh, kind of the chalk brush. And I love to use it on a lower opacity to kind of, like I say, slowly but steadily layer up the texture to, to create that, that real depth. Um, I'll just show you a couple more of them actually. So I've got this drip brush, which is quite cool. And I'll show you how I use that on the, uh, on another piece later, but I just want to show you now quickly because it's, oh, it's not. And in the meantime, I can see out of the corner of my eye, I can see some friends are joining us on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to come over to Behance because honestly, between hosting, chatting to Amrit and uh, streaming, I can only focus on one chat at, at, at a time. So please come over to Behance so I can just have one chat where I can see all your messages. So you just use the uh, drip uh, pen. Okay. Uh, brush. Yeah, so I'm just just playing around with the drip pen at the moment. Uh, the drip brushes. There's there's quite a few of the drip brushes, and you know, even if you're not necessarily looking for kind of a, a a drip texture in your work, I mean, to have it kind of cutting in to this to this background right now, it, it again, it just adds more texture, more depth, more more intrigue, uh, more visual mm. stimulus. You know, it does so many things at once. And, you know, I'm, I'm not really even using them as, as, as drips right now. It's actually more of a, a secondary texture. Um, so let's just move past the drip. Reminds pressures. me a bit of like, you know, this really old concrete where just mm -hmm. water, oh, yeah, like moss a, is running yeah. down and everything. Really neat. Yeah, that's a good shout, actually. Yeah, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I totally meant it to look like that. Yeah. It's concrete. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All on purpose. Yeah, um, of course. And then you've got some more kind of basic brushes, which are, I mean, I say basic, not to, yeah, yeah. to steal any of their glory because they are still wonderful in their own right. Um, and, and again, talking about the uh, kind of the subtle texture to the brushes, so you can actually see uh, that that brush head there. It's just got a nice, a nice jitter mm. to it, a, a, a non-standard shape, and that's really going to, and I, think this has got some kind of tilt sensitivity too so I yeah so the um the apple pencil is slightly different to some of the more expensive wacom tablets um where like it has tilt sensitivity it has pressure sensitivity but if you tilt the pencil and then rotate it along its axis it doesn't um work so it's really just tilting the pencil in all different kinds of directions that works, but if you have the pencil tilted and you rotate it along the axis, uh, it doesn't work. Oh, is that right? Yeah, this Something is that, uh, <laughs> just kind of happened. I just I just use it to draw, and that's interesting now, actually. <laughs> and of course, with the um, the second generation, you have that one touch sensitive surface you can tap on and uh, switch tools mm -hmm. and do. I think you can even use custom uh, shortcuts for that in Fresco. But I'm not sure. I don't. I have the old one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got some great options for kind of like the uh, pressure control, the uh, the pencil control, and also the kind of the tilting and things like that. Just generally, mm. um, I mean, the, the only difference, the main difference I found between the uh, the Wacom and the iPad is the the screen, the screen texture. So the the Wacom does have a good screen texture. Mm. The iPad's quite 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 glassy and smooth. I mean, you can get, um, you know, screen kind of protectors and things like that that add the texture. But, you know, I, I think really it's it's more a case of um, finding out the right way to make the same mark on a different device, which is kind of a diff almost, it's, it's, a, it's a different layer to kind of like producing art. So you want ideally your art to be consistent over multiple devices, but if all the devices are different, that's quite hard. So it, it's an mm. art form in itself to kind of, be able to apply the same pressures and, and be able to do that across different screens, you know, much like a traditional artist would do across different different mediums or paper textures um, and things like that. So it, it does kind of mirror traditional in, in, in that respect. Um, 
But yeah, I'll show you one of my uh, my favorite brushes actually, which is the, uh, the flat tilt brush. And the reason I like this one is it's got an opacity texture kind of built into it. And it creates that really nice wash that you get with paint effectively mm -hmm. and i'm not i'm not layering this up very well but you can layer it up <laughs> just like the previous brushes <laughs> just doing this quickly and again those very very slight brush strokes and details there that, that that's what these brushes are all about for me and that's something that when i made the switch from digital to uh, uh, traditional to digital that didn't come with me that organic mm. um non-digital look didn't come with me and it took me a number of years to try and figure out how to replicate that. And, and turns out, you know, eight years ago, these brushes would have been the answer. So <laughs> <laughs> oh. now they're here. <laughs> no, yes. You just need the flux capacitor to go back. And of course, um, <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, I have started with the, um, like the default Photoshop brushes, like the one that's like really, really smooth and just, a, that's just a circle. And the other one that's, mm like this low hardness, that soft one. And I was like, how do people paint with them? Like, how in the yeah. world? And then yeah. now, of course, now I see all the Kyle Webster brushes. And if you are a Creative Cloud or Photoshop um, subscriber, you can download them for free. Well, I, let's, well, not technically free since you're paying for Photoshop, but uh, at no ad additional costs. Let's put it that way. And... Um, Yes, you can just have hours and hours and days and days and weeks and weeks and decades of fun just going through all of those brushes because I promise you there are like over a thousand brushes, like 1,500, I don't know. Um, and some of them are just really intricate. Some of them have less texture. Some of them have more. Some of them look like a cardboard mythology. Others will make it look like you're painting in a reality asylum. So, uh, yeah, it's all kinds of different brushes. But just going back to you for a second, um, I see that you um, mostly have like a bright spot in the lower left corner. So at this stage, do you already think about like where the light will shine or is that really just uh, the background? Um, yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, I guess it's, I think you always have an idea going in um where the light's going to come from and things like that but uh but for this and for these brushes it's, it's definitely more of a, a an organic uh kind of feeling out process and and i think sometimes if you're too prescriptive going in that that kind of shows in the work um so it, it is nice to just almost switch the not switch the logic switch i guess the logical approach off and just do what kind of feels right and, and then you can you can assess and you can see if that's working from you know in terms of lighting and things like that mm. um but right now i'm just creating a nice kind of almost like a an atmospheric cloud type thing um to kind of frame our uh our tiger and i'm gonna go down to my super favorite brush which is the uh the vinyl scraper now this brush is just amazing so I mean, even just the name is amazing. I wonder I how know, it comes scraper. up. <laughs> <laughs> so if you just, uh, I'll do it on full opacity to start with. Okay, yeah, I can see why it's called Vinyl Scraper. Yeah. Now, um, now I can see it. It's like, oh, <laughs> let me just use two random words, transient globules, <laughs> and <laughs> we'll make a brush based on that. But now, yeah, I can see that. That makes sense. Oh no! And of course, and um, yeah, this, this brush set. This is just. I mean, sorry. Oh no! I was just saying. Um, I, I. It's really interesting how that brush is just dancing around, like that preview thing, like. Boop, 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 boop. And of course. Yeah, um, absolutely, and and this is part of it. So this is, like the uh, kind of not thinking too much necessarily about mm -hmm. what you're doing and just kind of going with the flow with these brushes and you know it took me a couple of hours to get the the feel down to kind of figure out how i wanted to use them so a lot of what i do is kind of splashing and, and, and touching the screen just just to add a little bit more each time not necessarily going in full force like that because you, you can lose control quite easily so um although you can create some nice some nice effects so i kind of dab around and feel it out 
So um, what I'm gonna do is. Do do you think um, it is more difficult? Do you think it's more difficult to really stay in that black and white environment at the beginning, or uh, for me, it is at least I really want to dive right into the color when I start out. But I, I notice that you are staying within black and white up until probably a very late stage, and then you can add in color if at all. So that's right, yeah. Do you? Yeah, is it more no, difficult to I mean, um, it's, um, <laughs> We're talking about each other. Um, I mean, it. it, it <laughs> no, I mean, it depends. It's a good question, actually. It's on. Um, it depends on the overall. It depends on the artist approach. I mean, hmm. I very much like to uh, approach every piece um, uh, from a respect of kind of values. So you know, grayscale, black and white, just to try and get the correct contrast down before adding the color. Uh, because when applying color sometimes well I, i do i don't know about you know i can only speak for myself but yeah, I, i i lose a little perspective when it comes to color selections and things like that if i'm just going with pure color mm. so if i can get the contrast down um you know most of my process is going to be black and white and then i'll go in and add, add color afterwards so i'm gonna do that now i'm gonna use a nice little clipping mask i mean we have about like 26 minutes left so you have all the time you need And cool. um, yeah, that's that's um, that's makes a lot of sense actually what you said because there is this saying if it doesn't work in black and white it doesn't work in color. Like yeah. if the contrast isn't right, if you ha if you have to use color to make it stand out, perhaps you uh, you could improve the artwork by working with light and shadow first. And this also plays into how the human eye works because we humans usually are really good at detecting subtle bright and darkness differences and the color colors actually come after that like at night you can't really see colors or also um i mean this is very geeky now but the way <laughs> video works is that if you compress it they usually compress the color channel first. The color is low resolution, but if the black and white information is still great, we don't notice. So in that sense, yeah, if the black right. and white version works, I know this is probably a bit far away from the actual topic of illustration, but if black and white works, the light and darkness information is right, then color won't be too difficult to work in. No, oh, you're absolutely yeah. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's um, and again, no, that's uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's the it's it's for me, it's about the contrast ultimately. Mm. So, where are the dark bits? Where are the light bits? Where's all that going to hit? So, for example, uh, just I'll just use a, a layer to add. I mean, I, I like to add a. Uh, I mean, my, my my background is traditionally comics, so that's a very mm. black and white form uh, yeah. medium anyway. At, at least the way that. That I would work. So, I mean, comics are a production line. So, you'll have um, an artist that's um, working on, say, the, the the layouts or the pencils or the rough breakdowns, um, and then you've got an ink artist, an inker that will come in and kind of really tidy up those lines, add some um, cross hatching textures, depths of the panels, different line weights, um, and then it goes on to color. So, I mean, a part of my process comes from that, I guess. Um, so, uh, and, and more lately, I think more and more artists are combining the first two steps of the process of a layout artist plus the the, the, the inking artist has kind of almost become one person hmm. so i i think that might be why i default to kind of the, the black and white process and then add, add color in at the end um totally yes yeah so so i might go in and uh, i'm going to use a nice uh, a nice basic brush here just to make sure my So I'm add and they are just having fun in the chat. They're talking about pizza and milky tea for some reason. Milky uh, tea? Yeah. Take a coffee right about now. <laughs> I can send you an emoji. I can draw one perhaps and print it out. <laughs> oh, thanks. It's, oh, it's the eye of the tiger. What? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm not so singing I'm, today. I think you should. <laughs> Maybe later. Maybe off screen. Uh, off stream. <laughs> then so I'll get I'm, the microphone. Then I've added my kind of 
Um, so, so this is kind of like a, a, a grayscale texture I would add to kind of a, a line drawing just to add that secondary layer of, of, of depth and just, again, decide where the light source is coming from. So it's obviously coming from, come from the right onto the tiger. Um, so using that layer, I'll then go in and, and add my color on top using a, a multiply layer or, you know, whichever layer, you, whichever layer uh, blending mode you fancy at the time. Yes, blend modes, everybody. Fresco, yeah. blend modes, yay. Fresco blend modes are great, yeah. Even I though mean, they, you they, they... probably only use two of them, or three, maybe. <laughs> like... I don't... No, I've been experimenting more and more, um, right, uh, the kind of adding like a, a, a lighting texture. If you have a look, there's a slight opacity on all the brushes, so you can actually kind of get a richer, richer color by again, going over things mm. kind of more and more, which is quite nice. So I'm just going to quickly fill the tiger in with some nice bright orange. And then I'll add some light on top. And again, it's a little, I mean, using the kind of like a, a round small brush to kind of do this, uh, to, to fill this the space, might be a little bit easy, but I, 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 because the brushes are, uh, I've got the the inorganic. But I kind of like the challenge of filling in without using that. So the fact that I'm using this and it's it's not that easy to do is, is um, yeah, giving me some kind of kicks. Let's just quickly fill that in. It's a little bit rough. Okay. So we have a uh, tiger with our, um, our kind of shadow layer and I can adjust that if I want to now. Just add a little bit more. Right and, oh God, I have to pronounce your name. Um, Thoria, I think, Carl. I, I will call you Carl because that's your second name. It says, uh, these brushes are fun. I look forward to do some crazy and hip and cool. <laughs> ideas oh any oh, good. cool ideas oh sorry um yes draw um a camel walking on a travelator while wearing three hats and one of them is pink wow that's a fashionable camel right there isn't it there you go I mean, one of the one of the head and the other ones on the two humps on the back, obviously. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, so what's in your coffee? <laughs> I don't have coffee. It's just water. I mean, it's, I hope it's what. <laughs> yes, water. Interesting way to make shadows. Yes, this is. Um, I really like how the colors are really saturated when they transition from the um, bright part into the shadows, like that orange. Oh, so good. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the best things about these brushes. You get, you're able to kind of layer up the effect. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I mean, I, I, get, I mean, you can spend your time doing that with your brushes to your heart's content, but the fact they come out the box like that and the, they just very, you're just able to use them in that way out of the box. I, I just think it's, it's, it's very intuitive um, uh, of Kyle and of, of kind of the, the, the thought that's gone into the brushes. Um, so there we have our tiger. I'm just going to turn that. And Catherine is asking, is using Amrit, Amrit using a mix of vector and raster brushes? No, they are all raster brushes, at least for this um, illustration. Do you also normally indeed, use yeah. vector brushes in other illustrations? Yeah, yeah, can do. Um, I mean, vector brushes are, again, it's kind of like moving from, from device to device with different screens. It's like a, a, a different way of working slightly. So a few years ago, we did uh, uh, some uh, illustrations for uh, the Disney Infinity War launch and, and they needed the artwork in, uh, in, in vector form. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's where they really handy that day um, because you know traditionally i do pixel art and things like that but but switching over to, to, to vector brushes especially something like fresco it's fairly seamless whereas yeah. um 
switching from Photoshop to Illustrator, again, you just need to slightly adjust how you're making those marks. Uh, it, it's, it's less so on the iPad, which is which is quite nice. Um, so I'm going to use the vinyl scraper again to create uh, just yes. a, a, a fun, <laughs> I final it. background. I love it. And yes, uh, and Sean is saying Adobe should hire Kyle T. He's not bad at making brushes. Yeah, they should. Perhaps he could even work as an evangelist for Rufus. Who knows? <laughs> oh, no. He was temporarily an Australian tiger upside down. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, no. And yes, Jackie uh, does Amrit always do gray layers first. Yes, I think we talked about that just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, yes, always do gray layers. So I'll, I'll quickly, I'm, I'm sensing that people want to see some color. So I'm going to um, <laughs> just add some uh, color to this. So I mean, my color approach is um, fairly basic because most of the work is kind of put in on, on, on the gray, grayscale level. So I typically use um just, Ooh, matrix tiger i know yeah <laughs> i typically use kind of whether it's uh, something like color burn or overlay mm -hmm. or, or, or even even color dodge to kind of add some color and then i'll, I'll go in afterwards and i'll pick oh, and yes you can scroll through that list i know it's missing a scroll bar that's the first thing i noticed when i opened fresco it's like only five blend modes what and then, oh, oh, you can scroll. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. All Oops. the blend modes are here. Don't worry about that. They're, uh, yeah, <laughs> they're all there. <laughs> oh. um, so then, and uh, again, I'll just go in and, and down a few extra colors. I'm gonna use a, and the clip masks are really great in Fresco, actually. They're just really quick yes. and easy to use. Very intuitive. A fairly new addition, actually. Yeah. So and of course, uh, uh, we are pushing you. Uh, one hour to create um, something like this really isn't a lot, especially if I take the first 20 minutes to talk about the contest, which, which we should talk about again in just a second. But first, I would like to answer a question from the chat, mm, because Garris is asking, what happened to Rufus? So um, Rufus is um, a colleague, I'd say. Um, he used to host a lot of Adobe live streams. But now, of course, perhaps if you know um, Gareth, there's a huge uh, conference coming up in a couple of weeks and Rufus is fairly busy preparing everything for Adobe Max. And uh, in case you didn't notice, it's free this year. Adobe Max is free, so make sure to join us and hopefully register for my session as well. <laughs> I have a session. Yay! And... Um, now I can finally say that I have been on the same page as Keanu Reeves. We're basically colleagues. <laughs> That's right. oh, I can never say that again. What? Is we're getting Keanu uh, Keanu Reeves to do a UK live stream? No, I don't think so. <laughs> no. But yeah, there are like over three hundred speakers, um, and they are all listed on the Adobe site, max.adobe.com. I'm one of them. Yay. I'm actually just, um, I, th I think I'm just above like the CEO of Adobe, like literally above it, ab uh, above him. So I can <laughs> finally say that I am above the CEO of Adobe, <laughs> at least on that side. Oh man. Anyway, um, yes, I think we can just, or I can talk about the contest again, just for those who haven't joined us in the very beginning of the stream and in the meantime you can of course just keep drawing and I will go over to my screen uh, you just keep drawing and I will talk about the contest for a second um, sounds good I'm in the zone now <laughs> right you can finally focus on your work for five minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah right because we do have a fantastic con contest and content but contest for you hopefully if you haven't entered make sure to go over to that can I zoom in? Hang on. Mm, yes, I can, but no, I can't. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't. Um, you can go to this website. I hope somebody can post it in the chat, please, again, because I can't do it right now. Otherwise, I will have to find a way. And um, 
download the brushes here on this um, button, they will be added to your Photoshop or Fresco libraries. And um, then you should see them in your uh, Fresco and or Photoshop and you can start drawing right away. And the thing is, um, we would like to see for this content, a contest, uh, we would like to see that for this contest, your way of expressing positivity, creativity, um, using the Keith Herring brushes. And if you submit that using those hashtags, that I can make bigger, haha, using those hashtags right here on these social networks by September 29, this time right here, you can win if you're one of the eight lucky people where is it? where does it say that uh eight people yes yeah there we go eight winners and you can receive up to uh, you can receive five thousand us dollars or equivalent in your currency and a one year creative cloud subscription and of course we will then feature your work at adobe max so i think that's just a great way to really get to know these brushes and perhaps win some prizes along the way. And of course, uh, see the full contest rules. Just click here and there's really everything you need to know. Who can enter, which countries can enter, what you have to do, when, what, where to share, and everything you need to know. Right. And if you're lacking inspiration, scroll down. And that's what some of the other artists have already submitted. Okay. Let's go back to uh, your screen to see what you have done. Oh my God, I can see happy little trees. Yeah, so this brush. again is one of uh, another one of my favorite brushes, which is the uh, kind of a spatter brush. And you can do tons of things with it. I mean, it's acting as leaves right now, um, but normally it's kind of a nice kind of atmospheric kind of texture to be added. And I like to kind of use it to uh, eat into the gray and the color using white um so kind of like this it's kind of like a smoky a smoky jungle type thing um yeah so what do i need to do to this now give more light into that tiger he's looking a bit it needs to pop a little bit more. Just make it pop, as the hovering art director would say. Do you know him? I'm doing it. Who's that, sorry? The hovering art director action figure. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh. You you tell. You, you're in for a treat. So, we, a uh, long time ago, we had a campaign for Adobe Stock, and they created an Adobe hovering art director action figure and I have him right here oh, really? there he is and um, if you shake him and turn him on he will give you advice whether you need it or not so if you're ever stuck you can just ask him and he will say I like it I don't love it <laughs> and of course try some more versions is that <laughs> is that his ultimatum on this piece then <laughs> Advertising. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Make it less stocky. Yeah, okay. I think that's enough. Thank you so much. Oh, one more. I don't see the fun in it. Okay. This looks like a short list. I need it to be gold. You won't shut up. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Back in your corner. Just put him right. <laughs> right we should ask him what he thinks of this. He should um, he should be weighing in. Okay, I, I, I can ask him. I'm pretty sure he will say it. I like it. I mean, I like it. I don't love it. Make oh, yeah. it less stocky. No. Okay. <laughs> Think bigger, but keep it simple. Okay, that's enough. Think bigger, but keep it simple. <laughs> yeah, so this is really how every art director is inside our head and just saying these extremely helpful quotes. Like, just make it pop. Make the logo bigger. Right, okay. Let's take a look at the 
chat. They're, they're having a great time. Yes. There should be a wait for it in there. Ah, uh, no. That's the art director would say. And of course, this isn't the last stream of the week because we have some exciting streams coming up. So let me just check the schedule for you. For my dear chat, uh, wait for it. <laughs> yes, okay. Tomorrow we will be joined by Hazel and Lizzie and they will do some brushology. It says right here. Okay, in fresco, of course. And they will work image, uh, images in watercolor. And one of them will be working on paper and the other one in fresco. Well, that's interesting. Have you worked with the live brushes? Have you used them before? Like the watercolor and the oil brushes? Me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not um, sure myself. Not so much, no, actually. I mean, there's some nice um, uh, kind of like qualities of those in, in uh, the Keith Herring brushes, but I, uh, no, I haven't tried the oil brushes oh, yet. Oh, you should. I probably should. The yeah, great okay. thing about the live brushes is they're not like the normal brushes. They're like the icon below them the one with the uh, water drop and yeah. they have their two options um, watercolor and oil and they behave in a very different way because those pixels remain live even after you have painted with them so you can interact with them you can mix the colors the watercolor brushes wow. they will actually the ink will run on the paper and you can mix and it's great and the oil brushes actually really behave oh, like okay. real oil. You can see the texture of the paint and um, yeah, you can do some surprising work with them. I like the flow of them. I mean, with oil brushes, you really have to use probably full opacity. So in, for this painting, it mm. probably wouldn't work. So uh, you found my weakness. Oh no. <laughs> I guess we know what you have to do later today. <laughs> oh, these are nice. Yeah, these are very nice. And nice. just for a second, if you like, if you go into a color and you now mix with uh, the brushes, the color really should mix in there, and you can really get in there. Oh, that's really nice. And they should be behave like real oil brushes. I mean, wow. close to real brushes. And for this painting, uh, for this illustration, it maybe wouldn't be the perfect choice to use them. I understand, but uh, if you have the time, <laughs> play around with them, use the watercolor brushes and you can achieve some really great results. And okay. by the way, um, following the segment tomorrow about fresco, we will have some self portraiture and photo compositing on Wednesday. And on Thursday, we will have six Lightroom tools to make your landscape images pop. I mean, come on, that isn't worth tuning in. I don't know what is. Perhaps a stream on Friday. And we will have Julu. She's a French Afro-Caribbean graphic designer and illustrator. And she will work on a guide to find your style. Or she will talk about how to find your own style on Friday. All right. So that's the week for you. And we have about four minutes left. Oh, four minutes. So any last minute tweaks to this illustration? Yeah. Get them in wow. now. Tweak. Doing it. So it's nice to add. Just and then we can all go and have lunch. It. Apart from Steve, yeah. who will probably go to bed. <laughs> oh, it's like midnight. Oh, Steve. I think he's just about done. All right. Yeah, I think our tiger's done. What do you think? Uh, honestly, I think this is really fantastic. It's amazing how you can just create the look of a... What's that? I mean, now it's a I'm very bloody it. tiger. <laughs> catch up, catch up. I mean, catch up. Um, but now I, I want to say um, it's really, f uh, it's really just baffles me how you can create the look of a forest with just like those, like no offense, but basic brush strokes in the uh, at the top. Um, yeah. You can create really just the intricate details of all the foliage, and of course, um, like it's it's really a whole atmosphere. 
I'd say. Absolutely, and, and you know, the greatest thing is you can you're applying your texture directly using the the, the brushes, which is I, mm -hmm. it's so liberating, especially for my process. Um, so nice. these these brushes have helped enormously. Okay, fantastic. So could you just zoom in one more time so we can really take a yeah. look at that? Yes, and it <laughs> no, 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 not that much. <laughs> just to see the. I think you can also just um, with your fingers pinch really fast, like. And it should, um, yes, there oh, we go. Yeah. it will automatically zoom as big it is, as, you, uh, as it can. Yeah, yeah. Right, fantastic. All right, Chad, what do you think? Let us know in the comments. And of course, thank you, Amrit, for joining us today. It was a wonderful time. And I hope that we can have you back at some point. R really great. I would love to see more of your illustrations. Perhaps even going into more comic like illustration that would be fantastic if you i think you're freezing oh there okay welcome back <laughs> um yeah so if yeah. you want your welcome well, back that sounds fab no, anytime that's fab. and i think chat appreciates yes ah all the emojis in chat clapping emojis great tiger i'm not lying i'm not lying oh dear uh thanks i love it great stream thanks guys they really enjoyed that one Yes, come back there saying, oh, fun streams, oh, thanks good. guys. Oh, you can just feel all the love pouring in, just oh, like yeah. the creative and, and contest if there, um, Yeah, if there are any topics that you did want me to talk about or cover or discuss using the, the, the brushes or otherwise, just mm -hmm. type it in the chat and yeah, let's take a look. All right. Well then, let's just go back to the contest one last time. Just highlight that. So if you haven't take, uh, if you didn't take a look at that, yet make sure to go to that link and i can post that in the chat again go to the contest page sign up join in who knows maybe you will win those five thousand dollars are equivalent in your currency and the one year creative cloud subscription i think that's a great price all right so i think that is it for today any 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 last words you want to share with the community before we Say our goodbyes. Um, well, first of all, thanks for everyone that joined. Uh, thanks to the host Tim, whose whose voice is is um, um, you know, yeah, we all know. <laughs> and um, and yeah, no, I hope to see you guys again. Oh, um, I, I hope we will see you again. And uh, oh, I think there's one more question. Maybe you can answer: Is there a way to add vector brushes in Fresco? No, not yet. I don't think so. I don't think there's a way. Also, I don't think you can add um, live brushes. I don't think so. At, at the moment, you can only add pixel brushes. So, um, yes. All right. Well, then, thanks so much for joining us. And I hope we can see you soon again. Tune in tomorrow, everybody, for the next Fresco session with uh, Hazel and Lizzie. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Cool. Bye-bye.